you walk around New York and you're bombarded with everybody's ethnicity, everybody's idea, everybody's smells, everybody's look. You have to deal with it and it's right there. You learn to deal with different people throughout the day. In order to be urban and have an urban society, we have to all pull our heads out of our ass really and start understanding that we're all different. We all come from different backgrounds, but to have mutual respect amongst each other. Until we have mutual respect, you could call it what it is and you can say it's urban. It's not gonna be urban until you're ready to deal with the everyday person in life and not look at them as being wrong because they don't think the way that you think. That's it. So I went a while back to Sedona. We stopped at Montezuma's Well. And at Montezuma's Well, you walk down the staircase. And this huge, and no offense, huge obese white lady that happened to be from Texas, had accent and everything. I get down there and there's ruins right on the bottom and I hear this lady on the way down behind me talking about graffiti, you know, and damn, and uh, so beautiful, the highways here, there's no graffiti and there's no this and that, and I'm listening to her, right? She catches my attention. We get down to where the ruins are and I'm standing there looking, I'm like, man, that's fucked up. Johnson family, 18 whatever, like some dudes rolled up in wagon wheels, wrote over a Native American's house. And I'm like, that's fucking disrespectful. This fat lady comes behind me and she's like, oh, look, honey, damn taggers rode over these, these poor Indians' houses. And I'm like, yeah, those damn taggers, the Johnson family from 1440. Oh, really? That's cool. It's really cool to them that they think that it's cool that a pioneer white family came and wrote over Native Americans' ruins and their house and disrespected it, but they're pissed off that a graffiti writer writes his name on a billboard. Think about that shit. What the fuck is wrong with society? You know? You, it, I, sh stuff like that floors me in life, and that makes me want to do even more graffiti just to piss those people off. Because if, if you think that that's right, I don't wanna know what's wrong. Like, I don't even wanna deal with it. I don't wanna even be around, you know? And I feel that the majority of people out there really do feel that way. It's sad to say, there's a lot of people that feel that way. You might, you might feel that way in the crowd. I might be pissing you off right now by even talking about it. Or you think that it's okay to do that, but you know, it goes into a lot of my pieces. The other um, SB 1070 piece that I have in there. Anti SB 1070 piece, crayon box, Arizona war on culture, bunch of white crayons in a box. Look like Hitler, look like KKK, backwoods, whatever, guys. And my name going across the front in color. You people can call whatever they want to call it. I'm gonna call it straight up how I see it. That law was made against Mexicans to be in a place that we are indigenous from to stop us from coming into your country. You can't stop people that are indigenous somewhere illegally here when you illegally stole something from them with guns, with smallpox blankets, with forcing religion, with doing all this stuff, all these crimes against humanity, and now the very people that you did that to you're calling illegal. I have a really hard time understanding what the truth is and what's right and what's wrong. That's what that piece is dealing with. That piece is dealing with the whitewashing, really, of America, whether the people are gonna get pissed off or not. It started in 1492, as soon as the European came over here, completely changed the game on what every native indigenous person is. Mexicans, we're not even looked at as indigenous anymore. We're looked at as Hispanics, which is from Spain, or Latinos, which is a freaking language. I speak English, doesn't make me an Englishman. You know what I mean? You have all these, all these factors to it. It's like, oh, well, this is our country, and this is this, and it's just like, freedom, you talked about freedom. You can't have freedom when you have slaves talked about equal rights. Why would you have to make laws on equal rights if they're already equal rights? All the way up to, um, what's that stuff? Uh, 
equal opportunity. Is that what is it? What is it? Equal opportunity? A lot of a lot of my Anglo friends, a lot of white friends are like, dude, why do you need equal like equal rights or equal opportunity in the workhouse still for you guys? It's not gonna be for us, bro. It's not gonna be for my people. It's gonna be for your people soon. Everybody knows that Mexicans and everybody else is having four to five kids in a household. You maybe one or two. Sooner or later, the majority is going to flip-flop. We're just trying to do you guys a favor. And if anything, showing compassion. You know what I mean? That's how I look at it. And that's right. You know what I mean? We'll be fair. We'll judge you by the stick that you judge in us. Are you going to like that? No. So I call that, I do all that stuff in my pieces. It's all symbolism. Um, the reason I bring up 1492, like MLK Day, everybody knows the MLK here. Didn't want to give it to us until we were offered like the Fiesta Bowl or something and then we were able to get it miraculously had nothing to do with corporate though right um, SB 1070 civil rights you we had blacks Latinos Mexicans Hispanics natives whatever you want to call us have always had to fight for our civil rights I had a really hard time in school you know what I mean trying to grasp those concepts of what's right and what's wrong because from where I'm standing everything was against me I didn't have anybody that looked like me signing the Declaration of Independence I didn't have anybody that looked like me giving up right to my great grandfather's land when it was Mexico right here I didn't have any of that stuff so it's like I use a lot of that angst I guess and that that burn inside of my stomach to produce the art through passion, through the heart. It's stuff that I care about, you know? I'm not trying to say that every white man's wrong or every this and that. It's just what's right is right, and this is what I've seen. And um, it's awesome because I got janitors that are Mexicans that are cleaning the place up that don't speak Spanish that come around the, the, the gallery and completely understand my paintings. And now I have academic people and uh, gallery owners and museum people completely understanding what I'm, what I'm doing. And I think it comes that fine balance. It's the low man on the totem pole and these people that have money and this elitist ideals right here understand. That's what graffiti does. You're telling me modern contemporary art does that? You think any Mexican janitor is going to give a shit if he just made up a new color blue? You know? If he, uh, just one monotone thing, and it's intellectually, it means this, and it's, oh shit, it's, it's amazing, amazing. That does not reach my people. Do, it doesn't reach any people, like, uh, of anything, that, unless you're in school and you're, and you're involved with that, that, that elite, that it means something. So all I'm doing is giving the low man, I say the low man on the totem pole, because like we were saying, the SB 1070 thing, you... You push that man out. He's the low man. He's the one that's not wanted. The man that's not wanted is now linked up with the man that understands and that runs the system and the way that the stuff goes. That's pretty powerful if art can do that. That's where I came from. I came from just graffiti art. Now I have all these great big ideas on how to change the world and change the planet just through art, not through violence, not through gang banging, you know. I have a way of actually reaching somebody peacefully and giving them a slice of where I come from and what I see. And if there's something wrong with that, I don't know what right is. That's hardcore. That's graffiti. That's hip hop. Just present the idea. Let everybody judge it for themselves. You know, you're either going to like it or you don't. You can go into the hood and have chicken and waffles and think it's gross until you taste it and you're like, holy shit, what do you know? IHOP has it now. You know what I mean? Holy shit, IHOP. IHOP serving chicken and waffles now because of the hood. Why else are they doing it? They're not doing it for every other white guy that comes from Scottsdale and from PV. You know what I mean? Not everybody from PV is driving to IHOP right now to go and get chicken and waffles. It obviously meant something, and they see it a way to market it and to make money, and, that, and that's, that's all it is. It's just business. Well, we'll go on the medical marijuana thing. It's legal, finally. 
people were freaking out freaking out nurses doctors whatever talking to me well what were you doing with your leg this long there's no way a person can tolerate the pain or are you taking cocaine what do you have pills at home or something it's like no i just smoke marijuana marijuana yes from the earth i know where it's coming from i know what's being how it's being grown just because like the fda and all these drug administrations say that it's food and it's tested and all this other bullshit it's still synthetic wannabe herb it's still synthetic wannabe heroin it's like at the grocery store we had this conversation you go to the grocery store nowadays what do you see you see yeah but they have to tell you that it's, or, it's organic why the hell do you need to tell us it's organic shouldn't everything be made this way like and it's like oh we're gonna start to be this way oh you mean the way the native americans were doing it when you guys got here so we'll go completely forward and then try to go reverse, call it something different and market it a different way and capitalize on it in a different way to do what? What are you doing for your people? You're keeping us in a repetitive circle running, running around a rat race, chasing our own tails and nobody catches this shit. We just sit back like, nah, dude, it's cool. You know, the doctor says it's okay to take Oxycontin. Synthetic heroin. You tell me synthetic heroin is better than marijuana. Some scientists made some crap in a test tube, gave it to some people. Whoa, got me really high. Cool, we'll pass it. What are the side effects? Mm, long term or short term? Short term, you're in pretty good. But if you do cause an addiction, don't worry. We have a drug called such and such methadone to get you off of that. And then we have another drug to get you off of the methadone. It's called Suboxone. And then we have another drug. So they just wean you off and pool money. But... Yo, we have CVS on what, every corner in America, like all over the place, drugstores, slanging drugs in the corners of the streets. Who are the real dope dealers? Who are the real pushers? You're telling me the guy sitting in the, in the hood selling a piece of crack rock compared to an entire store of drugs on the corner, slanging them to everybody with a smiley face? That's like my piece that's in the other room. The happy pill that looks like mickey mouse that's selling it to everybody with paper coming out of paper and money coming out of his pocket and on his crotch if you get really close it says cvs stores on every corner of america we'll accept this giant mickey mouse inflated billboard of people selling drugs to our kids and to us in general because a doctor or the government says it's okay but yet the Mexican dude on the other side, who I did the stencil of, Chich Marin from Born East LA, I do that and you're pissed off that illegals are bringing marijuana into this country of yours, illegally. I mean, where in the hell is anybody gonna look at anything morally or ethically correct? Stop looking at it, Republican Democrat. Stop looking at it um, any other weird way that you're looking at it. Just look at it as truth. Look at it as what's going on more ODs. I'm, I've never known a pothead in my life to OD except for on Funyuns and Brownies. Ever. You know what I mean? And if that's a crime, I mean, shit, Hostess is making bank off of us. Like, what do they care? You know? But the minute you take Uncle Sam out of the equation, you stop paying him his tax, or you stop giving him his money, they already know. They know right off of the bat. They have your thumb on you uh, the whole time. If they really want to do something, they could do it. It's disgusting. Make me sick. <laughs> Gandhi said it best. And this isn't a stab at religion or anything like that. It's just truth for truth. I love your Christ. None of you Christians are like your Christ. Think about it. It's not a knock on... Christ himself. It's a knock on the way that people are acting. You want to be urban, but yet you don't want to accept somebody's culture or somebody else's idea. You want it to be in this cookie cutter bread way of doing things. I thought this was America. You were able to express yourself and, and be a certain way. I know there's rules, but remember, not every kid is, is born with a silver spoon in his mouth and does come from a hood sometimes or does come from a less fortunate place. It's his only outreach is to get his, his, uh, his angst or get his his thrills from expressing himself and we you could be a lot worse you can have all those kids gang banging and being in, involved with more gangs and i don't think that's the answer i think graffiti could save a lot of things but it's up to us and up to you guys so think about it i'll leave you with that